Are we podcasting? I think we are. Give are we podcasting? To get this mom box. Yeah, get the mom box together. Hot, Thanks hot, for coming and listening to the hashtag I mom so hard podcast. I don't know how you would accidentally find yourself here, but if you did. Because you're lucky as yeah. a motherfucker. Well, hey. Go ahead and rate and review and subscribe. Yeah, do and all that stuff. You can also see us on YouTube. We do this video version. Good Some, for you. I, we, I've heard it called a VOD pass. Wait, Vo- vodcast? Um, yeah, somebody started using that word, and we also tried to use it as though we knew what they were talking we did about. It wrong. They They kept calling it like a VOD, and we were like, the VOD. Oh, my gosh, this Belgian beer. It's delicious. It's sweet and delicious. It's sweet and delicious. Wow. I'm really having I, – I am one of those weirdos who I do like having like beer tastings and wine tastings and like dabbling oh, instead yeah. of it. I don't know. Do like a little flight. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. We got to go. There's this really great, um, I, I told Colin he would love it, but there's this great German restaurant in she where we no used one to, ever. well, where we used to live in Venice when Chris and I first met Oof. and we were neighbors, hop, skip and a jump from where we lived. There's this great German restaurant that has schnitzel. She's not going to have it because she doesn't like delicious things, but they have got so many different the good beers, German beers. Steins. Oh, you can get a whole glass boot full of beer. Done. Yeah. That sounds we'll like heaven. There. That is heaven. And I, I don't want to brag, but if I go into a German bar and everybody's over 70, I'm a 10. Okay. Yeah. Plus I'm, I, I like walk through and like I'm slow motion walking. You know what I see? Professional partiers. Professional. Yeah. You can nobody's, tell by the rotation. That's right. Nobody. <laughs> the, the red b- noses and the broken bulbous snappers. Noses and, there is, and, yeah. The starting at 2 p.m. That's I. As you get older, you get them. But I'm like, oh my god, are these capillaries? Is that- I I'm like a roadmap man. They said like you'll get a broken capillary when you turn 30. It was 30, and I was like, I got one. I'm. It's like I am literally like, I'm whatever the the chart is that comes out of a book. I yeah. it just it's me. I had one when I was a kid because I blew my nose too hard. <laughs> I've got another thing from that, but that's different. No worry about it. What? What? I can't. Uh, just going to put this out there. Okay. We, I'm interested. I, I want to talk about funerals, which I know can make some people uncomfortable. Or maybe you just experienced a loss and that's like a lot for you. So maybe you want to flag this episode and come back to it later. Certainly we're not trying to make it too sad, but. Or maybe you're really Catholic and it's like your wheelhouse. You're yeah, like, maybe okay, this is the thing you turn up and you're like, let her rock. Finally a social environment where I thrive and I know everybody. 100%. Yeah. But I've had a really interesting experience this week because um, my daughter, Eleanor, one of her classmates, her, his dad passed away. And oh, so no. it's so incredibly sad. And she's only a fifth grader and it just doesn't oh. make any sense. Yes. When, nobody should have to say goodbye to a parent when they're that young. That's just the nuts and bolts of things being completely fucking unfair. It's honestly my biggest fear because I'm honestly, I'm not like, oh, I, I do want to live to be like 120. I'm one of those weirdos. But more than anything, I'm like, I don't want my kids to have that sadness of missing exactly. one of us, you know? And if you have lived on planet earth, you have experienced grief and grief is tough. And yeah. like, and so when she told me that her friend's dad had passed away, I was like, all right, we're stepping into Midwest gear. Let's we're taking them a meal. And yep. so now I love it because there's a lot of ways to make that really easy. They can do like a meal train like app, oh, yeah. of yeah. course. And Oh shit, I we, was supposed to sign up for Oh, see? God, you just reminded me. I know you got to get on the meal train. Crappers. But I tried to explain to Eleanor, I was like when someone passes away, the tradition that we have in our family, and not just because we're Catholic, but I think because we're Midwest, is you take food. And yeah. I wanted her to learn that because her big questions were like, well, what do I say? And I and I I had a like a moment to think about that. And I was like, you know, saying something is always the hardest thing because you never want to say the wrong thing. You never should be someone who thinks you're saying the right thing because I can promise it's the wrong thing. <laughs> and you should just know that like the most important thing is that they see that you're there and yeah. that they see that they love you and everybody's got to eat. So, you know, my grandmother was very good about dealing with people who were going through grief. She just had that magical quality to her that was like, well, you know, this is what we're going to do. We're going to bring over some food. I'm going to be there for you. I'm going to say very little. You know that I'm here. Here's here's a meal. And my mom yeah. is very good at it too. So I was like, this is important that Eleanor Again, knows. Catholics. Catholics. Really where they thrive is in that space. We really do. And I don't know if, how you guys funeral, but it's <laughs> if it's not the saddest event ever in terms of if it's not a, a young one or something tragic, a funeral is sometimes 
literally a good time. Like everybody's sure. starting to loosen up and like you have a potluck you, afterwards. Oh my God, That's the it. food yeah. at a funeral. My aunt Mary Lou passed away and she was the biggest partier I've ever met. And she's the one that like, when you went to a funeral, it, you didn't know if you were at a funeral or maybe a new pub was opening. Either way, you were having a good time. But at her own funeral, they ran out of fried chicken and I thought there was going to be a brawl. Like yeah. I've never seen grown men go after the last breast that was, and it wasn't even a woman's, it was a chicken's. Sure. Sure. And they were like, and there's like funeral potatoes and there's all, all and everybody sits stuff. around and kind of commiserates. And I wanted Eleanor to, to see, and I, and we did that with, with Finn. Um, he had a teacher that died of COVID while we were in COVID, but we, we were restricted. So we yeah. weren't able to do the things that we would normally do. And I just wanted her to see what our people do it's, when people. It's so good. Loss. I think it's, it's great to teach them young yeah. because I didn't, how, like growing up, I didn't have that many people pass away just because we have such a small family. Yeah. And like on my dad's side, my grandfather was passed before I was born. And then I was really young when my grandmother passed. Yeah. So I just didn't like. And your grandparents that are on, they. On my mom's side, they they just passed. They not that lived long to ago. be like 140. Yeah. yeah. Well, my grandpa was like, it was like a 20 years ago, but my, my grandma was, I yeah, think, like, I want to say like eight years ago or something yeah, like that. Yeah, she was so, in her 90s. She was in her 90s. Yeah. So like, I didn't have that experience and I have learned since I was in my 20s because I remember going to like funerals of people who like died really young. There being these women at funerals yeah. who just know what they're doing and it's, by knowing they're, they're in their element. What I mean is in the most like complimentary way. Yeah. They don't shy away from grief. They are there shaking hands and hugging the people they haven't seen in a long time. They're like commenting on how tall everybody has gotten, who yeah. just had a baby. They're like they're the making MC. they're they're making like grief a part of life. Especially they're, at the funeral, which can be you don't know what to do. You or don't say. know what to do, and if if you know you don't know, what, it, it's an uncomfortable thing. And I think there's there's like you're unsteady, especially in your younger years when you just, you, I think there's like, we don't want to see the person that we're there to support cry, which is like a weird thing, right? Like we're like, yeah. I don't want to see them in pain. I don't want, but this thing is painful. And this I thing is I a think, moment. I think you want them to feel like you're a safe place to cry. Like, I think it's okay to go over to somebody's house who's mourning crying already yeah. so that they can see that it's, we're just going to hug and maybe yeah. you're going to start crying too. And it's because Meanwhile, I'll, I'm like out putting their, their chains on their, t on their tires. Yeah. I'm like, I scoop the walk, uh, walk She's, the dog. I repainted I'm, your fence. Yeah. I've done just your laundry. I, I just, all they want is all you need or the only thing you can really do that helps somebody is to see their pain because yeah. that honors what they've lost. Yeah. You and know? it honors the person that they're grieving. Absolutely. Did you feel like when your dad passed, there was anything that a person said that felt like the right thing? Or did you feel like it was just people showing up that was the right thing? Because I know that there were some things that your kids said that were... Oh, yeah. Kids they, do not care. They don't understand. They don't understand, the so thing. they have so, no filter. So they're, you know, you will be like in the McDonald's drive through or something, and they're like, hey, mom, <laughs> can I have a nugget Happy Meal? And do you care that Grandpa died? <laughs> so, it's just it's like so dark. And it, or, it's do so you think he loved you? <laughs> Did he know that you loved him? Can I get some extra sauce? And is there a toy? Yeah, we'll uh, get a sprite with that. Yeah. Oh, they pull just over don't care. here. They don't. Well, they don't get it. But I actually think it's good because, so um, Dashiell a couple nights ago. So we have a friend who their their child was just diagnosed with type one diabetes. Yeah, it was a, a very scary moment. It was a big deal, and so both the kids had a lot of questions. <laughs> and in my house, I go number one thing. Your candy is up. It's, yeah, gone. it's gone. You're not going to eat candy in They're front like, of. They're like, well, it's not me that has it. I know, but you, I go. You're not going to eat <laughs> in front of somebody who can't ha Can eat you candy. Imagine? In front. Uh, let me take a. What candy. pure torture, right? I was like, you're going to pixie stick. I I was it, it, and the kid was young, is young enough to like She's not young. really understand that she shouldn't. Yeah, man, that's like, a just big. This, if nobody knows, it's okay. Big so much responsibility. Alt. And Dash will ask me, he goes, well, like, what can she, can she never eat candy again? I go, Dash, I don't know. Like, yeah. I don't know what it's like for her. You can ask her. And he goes, oh, I don't want to do that. And I go, why? He goes, because I think, you know, it might be a hard topic for her. And I'm like, 
Yeah, it's a hard topic for her, but you asking questions shows that you yeah, care. Yeah, you care about her. And that you want to learn about it. It helps people to heal, yeah. to like say these things out loud. And when you lose someone, it's so, and, and it does depend on like how close they are to yeah. you, how much a part of your daily life they are. Yeah. I mean, God forbid there are a child, a spouse or something like that, that is, you know, part of your existence. Like- your world gets topsy turvy. None of it makes sense, and like from the day it happens, everything is different. Yeah. So being able to talk to somebody about it and have them say that makes sense makes you feel like you're not going crazy. Right. You feel like you're spinning a little bit, and just to be able to talk to somebody who gets it or who's like been there before is the best. And I think showing up with a casserole to somebody's house is saying, "Oh, I'm not going to run away from this." For you, it's, yeah. it is like, it's kind of weird how if you've lost a parent, you become good friends with people you might not have been good friends with because they They've have to. They yeah. say there's like, a club. it's kind of a club. Yeah. And until that has happened, you just don't get it. And I feel like for my age and my life, I have been to way too many funerals. And I think that's just how my life has played out. But I think because of that, I recognize that grief is something very personal and it's something that everybody goes through in different ways. And sometimes different people can bring out different things. Like I believe that like for whatever reason, sometimes you're around somebody who just makes you feel really funny. And then there's people that make you feel like you have to be very like sort of serious. Stoic and yeah. And, and I think grief is kind of like that. Like whatever you need, you should get it from someone. And I don't think that other person knows exactly that they're going to be the component that might make you heal or might make you feel seen. So just give everybody fucking food. That's what I know. Give them food. Like, give them yeah. food. Give them a hug. Say very little and like have open dialogues just with your with kids. Just sit with them and hold their hand and, yeah. and hug them. And, yeah. Because people won't. Like you'll say, let me know if you need anything. That's just doesn't they'll, cut it. They'll, they'll never, never let you know. tell you that they need something and. That's the other thing. Like kids, I it's so funny how kids perceive grief. Yeah. Because when there's a curiosity there that'll get you in trouble with kids. Like they're curious about all the details and you're like, stop asking questions. But like, you <laughs> yeah. know, they're like, did he cry? Did they yeah. cry? Does it hurt? Does it hurt? And I'm like, yeah, it fucking hurts. Yeah, they fucking cried. Like, shut up. Yeah, like, and you also drop off the casserole and get back in the van. You also have to look a kid in the eye and be and say, I literally don't know, and no one does. Like, yeah. I don't have a good answer for you yeah. for this, but this is what I think, or like, this is what I believe. And one thing that I always like, it's okay to go to a funeral or go to a friend who's lost somebody and be awkward as shit and make them laugh because. The thing I've retained most about grief is you can't out happy it. No. While you are in grief, nothing's going to happen that's going to like, you're going to laugh enough to get out of it, or it's going to be like a big enough event that, that you're going to like- That it changes it. That it changes it. You could win the lottery when you lost somebody. Yeah. And, and it you might be matter. happy in that moment and you will cry the next because they're not there to share it with you. Right. So you always will come back to this, but it's nice to have times that don't feel so heavy where you're laughing because wouldn't they find this hilarious that this yes. happened at the funeral or that you yeah. did this or you forgot the this, you know, like- it's, don't feel bad about that. Go be your awkward self and just be exactly. a friend. Exactly. Show up is the most important thing. That's, or yeah. there, there's a baby being born the same time you're... I always think about that. Like somebody's worst day is somebody else's day that they're you know, seeing their baby for the first time or, or they're getting their degree or they're like the world, it, it isn't like lanes. It's yeah. all like, it's like a Venn diagram and we're all on it. And, you know, I just think grief is a really tough thing. And I think it's totally okay to, to swim in it and to, to live in it and to know that it's, it is painful. And I think as players on the outside of that, like, we just have to do whatever we can, we can do to make good. people feel better. Well, when if I've told this story before, listeners of the podcast, the forgive me. Make sure you rate, review, and subscribe. Uh, but also, so when um, Dash was two or three weeks old, a friend of ours had a six-month-old that passed from SIDS. Oh. So not only did we not sleep for oh. quite a long time because of that, I 
thought like, if something happens to this baby, I, life is over for me. Life is over. Life is, it, as you know it, it is, but it's it's over. And well, then- it's the thing that we all fear the most that we just kind of don't say. And yes. it's the thing that makes us like- Insane. Literally cover our outlets and put everything on bouncy toys Weighing and never the walk. stroller in case it oh gets God. wet like fucking maniacs. My, like, my you, brain was like, you're going to fall accidentally off of a cliff. Oh, my God. And I didn't know. I don't even go near cliffs. No. I literally live in a freaking flat neighborhood. Your I, brain is just like worst case scenario. It's because like, you love so deeply. Yes. It is you doing it math is. about love. Well, then... Um, also postpartum <laughs> yeah, devil. Those hormones, those hormones are really kicking you in the, yeah, in the uterus, which yeah. already hurts. Which already like hurts. It, it, You've got you a know. C-section scar, your asshole has hemorrhoids. Nobody's doing great. It's well, hard. Six months later, she was pregnant. And I maybe had never cried that hard in yeah. life until that point. Tears of relief because I went, they didn't die. Like yeah. they, their life yeah. gets, they get to have joy later on still. Like it's not over. Like they had, she's still. Of course, she, you it, never it, get it over still, it. But yeah, that, that, that there's happens too. that there's something. No matter if the worst thing happens, you can still have hope that life can be joyful, joyful again. and happy. And yeah. I think the people, you know, the people that we met along the way who've experienced kind of the biggest versions yeah. of loss that you can imagine as a mom have all said that there is joy again. Which yeah. is it's reassuring, lovely. yeah. It is. And I, I think um I really like the expression. I think it really comes from the Jewish faith, which is may their memory be a blessing. And it it is interesting when you experience grief, for a while you resent that expression. Like oh, I'm not all ready. The expressions. Yeah, all the expressions People, save you. Yeah. Like oh, he's in a better place or like oh he doesn't have to suffer. You're like, I don't fucking care. Like my life is altered because this person yeah. even when people are like, You'll see him in heaven. I'm like, well, hopefully that's not for a while. So that means I got to deal without this person in my life for several years. Yeah. You know, I, I know those are all comforting thoughts, but I think, um, may their memory be a blessing. It kind of hits me different. Cause I'm like, Oh, right. Cause in the beginning it feels really hard. Yeah. And then it becomes something that you cherish and you want to talk about, but not yeah. right away. And everybody has to come to those terms on their own. But yeah. Um, you laugh about the memory rather at always feeling like painful. painful. Well, it's so funny because a friend of ours that lost her brother like way too young, she said it used to really like piss her off when people would say, I don't know how you, you do, do it. it. Like I I wouldn't be able to. And she and what she would hear is, do you think I didn't love him as much or as like, you love your brother? Yeah, that I was picked accurately. Like there's a yeah. lot. Of, yeah. But then that being said you know, don't worry about saying the right thing too. You I know, know there's no right thing. That's yeah. why I say drop off a lasagna and be done with it. That's like, right. Cookies never go, hurt anybody. Look, everybody needs their front porch swept and make sure that their tires are all full of air and put some gas in the car and, <laughs> or, you know. Kristen can be doing all of that while I go into the house. Yeah, I just say, I, you just see me on your ring app and all I do is just maintain your lawn and like <laughs> make sure that you've got food in the fridge. They're like, how'd she get in? Never mind. I know, look, that water's not going to, that lawn's not going to water itself. I'm just yeah. going to make sure you're taking care of yourself. It is. I think if you get too in your head and, you know, kind of worried about your comfort level, it's harder to be good to somebody that needs it, you yeah. know, because I think why like old Catholic aunts and, and moms are so good at it is they're like, they give no fucks. They're like, they give no fucks. I'm going to they're this. They're like, it doesn't matter about what you're feeling. It matters that you show up for them, dummy. Absolutely. And they're not like head to toe black. They come wearing an outfit they look good oh my in God, and they're yes. like, it's it's they see people they haven't seen in years and they hug those people because they don't know yeah. when they're going to see them again and if they're going to see them again and like don't like lean into that part of life as being just a thing that we all have to deal with you know I remember when I was in high school we uh, actually I was I think I was in eighth grade again I think in my little life I've 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 been at that party a few too many times, in my opinion, yeah. which I we lost a car of teachers. They were in a terrible oh car God. accident and they died. And so that was just, it was so hard because it was a girl, she was high, she was older than us. She was in high school. It was her mom. And then there were a couple of teachers and, and my, my eighth grade 
history teacher Phoebe McCullough was w- passed away there. It was just, it was a lot. It was a, it was very tragic. And so I remember like a friend of mine was like, I'm not going to the funeral because I can't handle it. And I remember thinking that is not an option for me. Like Terry Hensley is like, you suck it up, my friend. She's right. And you show up and yeah. you hug them and you say you're sorry and we're going to go to the reception and you're going to pick up plates yeah. and you're going to like, I'm sorry if this is uncomfortable for you. Yeah. Imagine, imagine the people <laughs> that are suffering, you dummy. Yeah. Like she was like, get your ass in the cart. Not that I was trying to get out of it, but I did. I was like, I was like, well, I feel... Like, it's going to be a lot. And she's like, it doesn't, you you do the hard thing. You do the hard thing and you show up. Because yeah. someday you're going to be in their position and you're going to want them to show up. And it really is true. I, yeah. I really think that's something that I think you've always talked about this. Like, you want to be one of those ants at the funeral. Because Damn right. they're mob bosses. Because they're dealing with something that all of us sort of are afraid of. And they just go through the storm. There's no... Yeah. You have, everybody has somebody like this in their life where something like this happens and they like, they're like, it's my fucking day. I'm putting on my, my beads. I've got my rosary. Yeah. I'm I'm getting to it. Yeah. Well, I remember there being- the funeral potatoes on. (laughs) Hell yeah. You always keep some frozen shredded just in, Hell yeah. You're like, where's the booze? Get the good stuff out of the- Yeah. Somebody's got a bottle of scotch or a whiskey or something. Everybody's taking the edge off a little bit. If you're Irish- you do the wake inside of a pub, which makes me so proud, which I is feel- that I've never been to one of those. The Irish funeral better than anybody. They don't F around. Now I'm talking like you're hardcore Irish. Like they, and I love it because the Irish also believe in like, there's equal parts celebration and sadness that can come together in song or in yes, prayer. Yeah. And they do a lot of like a reflection on like what it means to be without this person. I remember when your, your dad passed away, we talked about it a little bit, that there's this poem that they wrote. It's an Irish poem about how when someone you love dies, they're just in the room next to you. Yeah. And, and that like, for some reason, that imagery, because the Irish oh, loved it, I they know. really think about it a lot. They really know how to do it. But they have like the wake in the pub, the, the caskets in the pub, and everybody's singing songs yeah, and and drinking whiskey. And there's something about that to me that feels right. It was right. And I, you saying that gave me a lot of comfort. Like we, we talked about it in a video, and then Jenny Long found the whole poem oh, and yeah, sent it to lovely. me. Oh, yeah, it's lovely. And she's somebody too that's good about like she'd be great leaning into you know and then God like six months after my dad passed away her dad died suddenly too and so we kind of had this like a club this new formed r- relationship or like bond we yeah. were always good friends but then we had this bond of that and being able to like we will just like text each other on our dad's birthdays or like the day that they pass like they're they get just it. in our heads you know like yeah it's like seared into your um your memory like forever jen don't have an emotional moment when there's a plane overhead during a podcast no i wasn't if having an nothing, emotional moment i can't moment, get I, you to uh, we're Dang it, feelings. Mm-hmm. Hot guys, wieners, feelings buttholes. suck. I was going to talk about how my, um, when I was in high school, just started high school, so maybe I was a freshman, a girl that we went to school with, and I'll say her name, Heather, died in a car accident. Mm. Like, and it was like tragic. She was way too young. We were like, 13, 14, Whoa. like young idiot kids. She wasn't a dear friend of mine. She was like uh, somebody I shared lockers with, her best friend. Right. So I, she though, was always there like she's waiting in with your her. Ether. Like, yeah. So they had like a funeral wake, whatever. I think she was Catholic. Pretty sure she was Catholic actually now I remember why I remember that. And um, my dad said, hey, if you if you and your friends want to go, I'll, I'll drive you all. You know, like yeah. they, I'll, you guys have their parents write a, a note to get out of school and I'll take you all. And I go... I, Dad, I didn't know her that well, so I feel like, is it going to look like I'm just trying to get out of school or yeah, something? Yeah, isn't for it going, attention that, grab? And that that's feels, fair. I think that's an okay thing to and he to was consider. like, he goes, "Do you have good memories about her?" And I'm like, "Yeah, she was like the nicest person yeah, ever. So then, like, she had the prettiest hair. Like, I." Yeah. And he's like, "That's enough to go and like remember all of that." And yeah, so, and it's going to feel good for her parents to see like that she, she was loved. She was loved. Yeah, yeah. and so. <laughs> He brought us, and I remember he let the four of us, like, sit in a pew, and then he, like, stood in the back or something like that. 
but they had communion, oh. which I was not an expert in. And <laughs> I was there with my friend Mike. Mike, I've talked about before. She's high and has the munchies. But no, no, Mike, Mike, the one who's, when I skipped school, I was yeah. ironing my hair. Yeah, yeah. boy. Yeah. Yeah. And then you went with him and they yeah. did communion. And we did communion. And it was the kind of communion where they put the wafer in your mouth yeah. and then they pour the wine into your mouth. Yeah, that's always weird. And I watched him go and I thought he was going to like, like it yeah. was too much or it's something, like, spit yeah, it all like out. A, and I, because it was so uncomfortable, I was in front of like a church full of people. I was like, that's it. I'm going to laugh. Yeah. I'm going to fucking laugh As right now happens. in front it's, of... Everybody needs to air out the balloon a and, little bit, you know? That's what it was more than anything was like, it was so sad. Yeah, it you're was, like, God, I need to like so break this up. I still, like, I didn't know her that well, but I still have the program of in, course. in all of Those my stuff Those are very impactful moments a young person goes... And I was like, if he fucking makes me laugh when I go up to... I will... In, it was so horrifying. And then my dad like brought us to pizza and we just talked about it. And then like, yeah, you worked, you went you're to, kind of going through the storm a little bit. Yeah. Is, and it was, sense. it was good. I think it was also good for us, whether she was like, we were that close to her or not. Like everybody knew her. We all had gym class together to, to deal with that together yeah. and to like have that be our first like entree into like grown up understanding of death. Yeah. Cause you do when you're like a teenager or that age, like Delilah knows when things are sad and she thinks like, here's how it would feel for me. But we were thinking of like the well, family. She, Heather doesn't get to go to this dance. Yeah. She doesn't get to Empathy is drive very, a car, you know? But there's a, that, that's like just looking at all of the angles and that's experiencing grief. That's on some level like experiencing loss because you do think about all of those things. Oh, she doesn't get to do this or yeah. how do her parents feel or what, you know, her dog's going to wonder where she is. Like it's all those things that like are just so yeah. crumbling. Here's what I will say about Catholic funerals. I'm really on the fence about this whole wake thing, and I've been like, "What is the difference?" I don't know. I think it's the darkness and Catholics. We're looking at we're tray like, because well, there's a wake. There, it, it can be open casket or it can be closed casket. Oh yeah, you do a wake. It's a prayer service. Basically, you do a rosary. I don't know the just, night I before knew, the funeral. Yeah, I was always like, it's like a pregame situation. You go in and you view. Let's just pretend we're talking about an old aunt who had lived a fun life and is like 98 years old. Let's just say it's that for this conversation so we don't go too dark. Basically, you, you, you know, your aunt, my Aunt Mary Lou passed away. God bless her. She was super fun. I guarantee she was my aunt that had a kegerator in her garage oh, and God also yeah. drank, um, had wine that came in, what do you call them? Uh, a box in not the a box. fridge. Always. Oh, a handle, the handle, big, like the big Ernest one. and Gallo one. Ernest and yeah. Gallo. Mm -hmm. Like you almost couldn't call it wine. Yeah, like an old like, school gin jug yeah, kind of like, thing. Yeah. Exactly. That you'd pop off the top. Yeah. 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 So she would Plastic she would tell top. me to go yeah. get the wine and I was like, <laughs> I can't carry it. Legally, this isn't wine, This Mary is Lou. a keg of yeah. wine. And yeah. I think the wine people are pissed that we're calling Osti Spamonti wine, whatever. Yeah. Speaking of. Beloved beloved yeah. woman and she's the funeral aunt she was the so it's her funeral day and so you go to the wake and like it's very daunting to see them in the casket and my thought is like i swear to god i just want to say right now i better look better in it than i did out of it i want all sorts of work i want girl i'm gonna get all that hollywood tape and i'm, I'm I've, if i will go in and also, second guess all of that work because i will then i will get the double chin i want to be on my side up a little bit yeah or like, oh, like kind of like this yeah like i'm like posing for like a magazine or something like just move me around no one cares i don't want to be like laying there in a weird pillow it just it does like kind of stay with you and that's the only thing that i i, I know I, catholics we we do it but i just feel weird about it but then i feel weird that they're in the casket anyway I do think those viewings are really, they're kind of strange because we as animals, like. It doesn't make sense. It's, yeah, it's like no, Uncanny Valley. You're like, what? You know that is not them. You know it's it's like a, a picture of them almost. That's what you, I'm saying. Your brain is it, is, yeah. is it putting together that this is the same person. But I don't love the way of Earn feels either. I don't like any of it. Well, my. I heard my, you can get turned into a giant. Diamond. No, you fun. can't. If you if they if you get cremated, they can 
do this pressure thing. Because oh, I thought I bet my carrots would be so low. They'd I tried like, to talk you know, my grandma into carrot. doing that with my grandpa because she was like love bling. She loved jewelry, and I was like, yeah, you could do that, and like you could you know have them on your finger or on your neck like all the time. Like yeah, and she was like, no, 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 because I want our um, I was gonna say <laughs> was grounds, say yeah, the <laughs> coffee grounds to be mixed together, oh, but the the ashes to be mixed together. And um, so they, for her, she wanted to have like a nice service. And she had told my mom, like she wanted the viewing and then she wanted to be cremated. And this fine, fabulous woman was like, I want at that viewing, I want all my jewelry. I want all my blinks. I want all my rings on. Hilarious. I want I to be her. in a beautiful white silk nightgown. It was a white like, silk nightgown okay. and then like a fancy robe on top <laughs> of it. Her. Like white. Do your day. So she Do looked your fantastic day. but it and then you know then she the next day or whatever she was cremated but i loved that she did that i didn't understand it then but i was like there's never been a more mimi moment than that moment where she was like she, look i want to look good and i want everybody to have to walk by also me and say she went she out the way good. the way you went out was the personality she had when she yeah, was here totally and that's the thing man i'm like and i read this really fun statistic that there are caskets you can get with your alma mater inside oh so, yeah and nebraska Nebraska made that company multimillionaires oh boy. because it, everyone's getting their like, you know, Herbie the Huskers right up above you. I'm not, I love me some Nebraska and I love me some corn Huskers, but I'm not getting the lining of my casket done in Nebraska red. It's, it's not good for my skin tone. A, I want to do something I mean, like the word tacky does come to mind. I do have to say my mother who again, because we are Catholic and because she is 12 out of 13 and because we've done a lot of funerals, she enjoys talking about it and has since I was little. And I didn't because I didn't want to think about that with her, yeah, but yeah, they yeah. would go on a trip and she'd be like, all the information you need is in the death drawer. And it would be like, you know, I don't know. How, how do I know which drawer that is? It, it has a post-it on it that says, says death, death drawer. drawer. Yeah. And you would, she would she would bring out this packet and she'd be like, if anything happens to us. I know. I'm like, Jesus. So then I started to make jokes. Like she'll, it bothers me because like it's, you know, they're getting up there. It worries me. I worry about that stuff. But she'll be like, well, this is probably the last time I can lease a car. <laughs> and I go, oh, well, God. Terry, I would like you to make sure that you don't leave that lease for me. I don't want the responsibility. Then go low miles, go Terry. Go low miles. Save like, yourself on the... Maybe you should only lease it for a, a, you know, a year and a half. Yeah. And she's like, well, you're a smart ass. And what? I'm like, well, don't talk to me about your death, woman, because it's going to knock me out. Like, I... I not into it. My mom's been saying that shit since she was like 38. I mean, she's do like, not do that to my kids. That, that hutch is going to be yours someday. And I'm like, relax. I know. Relax. Nobody needs your hutch, man. I know. Like, I know. Just stay healthy. My mom says it about her that way. jewelry. She's like, I want one of you. I want Megan to have a diamond and I want you to have a diamond. And I'm like, can I get the one on your left hand? It's bigger. And she's Good. like, she's like, you know what? That's not appropriate. And I go, can I have it now? I mean, it's better that I have it now. You want to see me like, enjoy but, it, right? Yeah, you and wanna, she's like, you know what? I'm not going anywhere soon, anytime soon. And I'm like, good, then get your three-year lease on your fucking car and stop yeah. making it sound like we're grounds for- It's coming for, tomorrow, it's I know. It's coming tomorrow. By the way, you're the most fit, spry, 74-year-old. She's always, it's Man. like the second- then, 74, I'm going to I'm gonna pick break. up new hobbies at that's 74. That's Goldie Hawn, by the so way. young, I know. That's, she is. That's a young but age. But she has been talking about this, and now I'm doing the math. Since she was 28, 30, it's, it's some crazy. death talk has been part of my conversation forever. And I'm like, Terry, I don't want to, let's not well, plan maybe it, it is right now. Because she's so comfortable with the topic. She's good at, like, she's been to a lot of funerals, Catholic, you know, she's. Do you want to know how comfortable she is? Uh oh. In the death drawer, there is a tape. And that tape is to be played at her funeral. Oh, God, is it? And she is singing. Wow. <laughs> God love you, Terry, because uh, you know what? I go. That actually gives me a really incredible idea. Dark. What if I made karaoke? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, we're going to start off with this yeah, MP3 the of me is in the doing, casket, and it's just like, just like a white wing of May we do that. May yes. we make it joyful. But I'm like, I'm like. I am not playing you singing at your own funeral when Damn you, right are you are not being funny. Damn She's right like, you it's are. It's my final wish. And I'm sure it's like, uh, 
and he will raise you up on eagles. Like, so sad and weird. Like, no. Yeah, maybe it would be fun to, like, really fuck with your kids and be like, okay, I just have three very simple things that I want to have happen. Number one is I want Vince Neal to come. <laughs> Come and sing my favorite Motley Crue ballad. I, um, the second thing that I want is it all to be catered by Wolfgang Puck. Yes, thank okay? you. And then the third thing that I want is, um, I don't know, what else is impossible? Oh, oh I, I want, know what you do. I, I know my, what you want. What? I know what you want because I saw this and I thought it was so awesome because it was like the weird aunt who passed away and she was really eccentric and she literally gave every single... One of the girls at the funeral, which was a lot of them, nieces, sisters, whatever, rando would take something off. This is so Jen. We're at a meet and greet and she'll have this bracelet, whatever. And somebody will compliment her and Jen will go, well, you have it. You have it. And she'll give it away. All of them wore the jewelry that she had Aww. given them. And there was a lot. She was like, I don't know. She like big turquoise pieces and Love like they it. all wore it to her funeral. And I was like, that's a very Jen thing. I think you could probably also, this might be the most over the top thing and it would be hard to pull off, but you would insist upon it and your kids would have to figure it out so that like you think it's going to be closed casket and then they go to open it to show how like incredible you look. And it's like a glitter bomb that's like fun. goes off. Forever. And it leaves everyone covered in glitter. And so <laughs> yeah. then they're like, you were at a funeral, not and a then, strip, like, strip the Club, right? lights start and yeah. stuff. And, there was yeah. a really ornery Irishman who, this is so twisted, but they all were laughing, so it's okay. And he was elderly and ornery at the, in where they bury you, which is always the roughest part of funeraling is when you go to the, yeah. actual, when you do the yeah, yeah, yeah. parade or the, geez. <laughs> it and just you, likes to start raining. Oh then. God. It always rains and it always, it's like weird because it's beautiful flowers and it's sad. And his last request was that they played it over this like boom box in the background. And he was like, Hey, let me out of here. Hey, you guys. And like, it was so twisted, but they were all giggling and laughing by the end. And I was like, there you go, man. There you go. Well, I think we managed to bring funerals about to not quite such a, I hope it's not too, I don't want it to like make people feel bad, but I hope everybody that's feeling that right now is, knows that we love you and yeah. we know it's not easy. Well, you're going to feel bad no matter what. Yeah. You're going like to feel bad no matter so, what. Uh, At least we haven't gone like, you feel bad, you pussy. Yeah. Aww. You feel bad. Yeah. You know what you should do. <laughs> you know what really helps with grief working out oh yeah no. oh god you know what you hit the gym you know hit the what gym. I that'll really, really get I, you back yeah. to where you're supposed oh my god to be. i feel like somebody's gonna say that i'm a horrible human for saying this but i can't tell you how so my entire family is military yeah so i cannot tell you how many times i have been to a funeral where they couldn't get the live like military band to play taps and god bless some dude who shows up in like his old cutlass I haven't brought this like, out since 77 it brings the oldest boom box you have ever seen oh no and and plays the you know tap somewhere from the middle at like the wrong volume i mean talk about like needing a little bit of comic relief at yeah. like i I mean, our, you're looking for anything. Listen, comedy and tragedy. That balloon's going to pop. They're not on very separate easily. sides of the room. No, they're they're back to back. That's right. And we dip in and out of that. And that's the only way we can survive is if you know if this is the saddest moment, this will too also provide probably a, a lighter moment and just wait. Just well, wait for it. God it's bless my Aunt Toots at her brother in law, Earl Dean's funeral, showing up in a red polka dot dress and she had a white sweatband and sweat cuffs on. And we all it was fucking are hot. grateful <laughs> for Aunt Toots because without Aunt Toots, it's just too fucking sad. She was literally like, It's hot. Let's wrap it up. And go get some <laughs> coleslaw and chicken. Go. Some, we're, somebody's three seasons room's got to be set up for this. Three seasons room. Right? That's the only place you got room for oh, it, man. right? If it, or, it's the, or it's the Catholic, what do you call it, where you go do coffee and rolls, where you go oh, have yeah. the, the, oh, not the, the mess it, hall, the, um, what do you call the, it? Um, mezzanine the or the, yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, yeah. Everybody, I'm like, I've been to this one a bunch. I know, I know where all the. Can we turn the AC on today? Couldn't yeah. we? Can Everybody's we, got guys, a suit on. I know on. what I gave let's, in the coffer. Let's, let's put up the AC a bit. I have a mom okay, box. Okay, let's do a mom okay. box. Okay. All right. I love this gal. Jennifer Schalk. Jennifer. Jennifer. I love, I love a Jenny S. God, 
the seventies loved the Jets. Yeah, number one name for like three years. Also, I want to know where it comes from. Sorry, sidebar. It's just so popular. Like, where the f- you Gwen know the only other name I know that is as popular as the name Jen is Mary, and we know that's biblical. Well, that's literally. Sure ain't. It just seems like Jennifer is like somebody was in a band. Um, it does. It it has like one of those old. I read like the old Latin beginning of it. Like Guinevere is an offshoot of it. Like Genevieve is a Jennifer. Okay. Like they they all come from the same. And There's it, iterations. Yeah, and Got it, it is it is. Boy, um, the seventies were like let's land on Jennifer. Yeah, let's. Something- I knew a Jennifer that never went well. Oh yeah, that's like just your a Jennifer, to, and you somebody just, misspelled the birth certificate. Yeah, I get that. Okay. But a Jenny asks, okay, hello, ladies. I've been watching your videos since the first. The moment Jen forgot Delilah's name, I felt understood. (laughs) I am a busy mom with two jobs, two kiddos, eight and two. I know, a COVID baby. I'm a Girl Scout leader. I volunteer for our PTO. I also help with parties for my daughter's dance team. And my husband is in the military, girl. Good God. Doing it all. Snaps to you. Cheers. The first time he was gone for an extended period of time after we became parents, I took her daughter trick-or-treating at my in-laws and left wishing them a happy 4th of July. (laughs) Girl. That feels right. I bought tickets the first time you came to Spokane. At the time, I wasn't pregnant or even planning baby number two, and he was one by the time I finally got to see you. Oh, my gosh. I've only recently started listening to your podcast. See, this is why I'm saying take a mom friend. friend. I only recently started listening to your podcast while at my side gig job, and I just love you both. I can't believe it took me so long to jump on the podcast. In fact, my husband's extended family is in Nebraska what? and listening to you made me want to go there. Wait. We have now planned our summer vacation to Get visit his family in Nebraska. Any must do's? Oh my God, so many. Okay, so we'll message you back, girl, but maybe we can even do a podcast about what you have to do when you're in Nebraska. There's or a lot of fun things. The marketing is it's not for everybody, which I, makes me laugh so hard. Well, I could talk for 20 minutes about the zoo, but that's a whole. It, I, me too. The, I can also the tell Henry you the Dorley best zoo in Omaha is one of the best zoos in the world. Don't get yeah. me started. Okay. Uh, and now I know you have a busy summer, but any chance you will have a show there the second week in July. No, not then. We're not. Okay. My dream would be to see you in your home state. It's we fun. will be driving from Idaho, right outside of Spokane, to Lincoln, and then Omaha, and then back. So pray for my sanity. My two lifelong besties of- have yet to become mommies, so sometimes this mommy mm. gig feels extra lonely. Mm. Thank you for letting me be your bestie you didn't know existed. Listening to you makes working an extra four hours a week to pay for my daughter's dance lessons enjoyable. Thank you, ladies. Love you, Jenny. We S. love you. And have fun in Nebraska. Girl, there are fun things to do. And the best thing to do if is- we're anywhere near Spokane, let us know. Go look yeah, at we the are. list and you can have tickets. I've got to look on our- yeah, yeah. By the way, we are doing a live show. We do yeah. a two-person stand-up show. So go to imomsohard.com for See tickets. See if there's some place near you. forgetting to say that. Yeah. So please come. And also, God love you. I know the military moms out there that have dealt with like their husbands being gone for a year on some level I envy. But but <laughs> oh, we man. it's like we, single it's parenting. Tough. It's it, tough. plus, you know. And no one I think everyone thinks just like what we were talking about, like you can just handle it. But maybe if you do know, know a military mom, instead of being like, Is there anything I can do? Or just let no, me know. Just if show up. Show up. Show up with cookies. Show up with a lasagna. Food. Yeah. No. Show up with fresh cookies. Show yeah. up with old cookies. She yeah. doesn't care. And also, she's like not just single parenting. She's worried. She's got the weight of the world worried about yeah. her spouse yes. and Thank vice you versa. for your service. Everybody. I know. Yeah. Um, I think we podcasted, I think you guys. We podcasted. Yay. Oh, I need my readers. Is it Give two me your in readers. the morning? Yeah. Is it? Late? No, it's not. It's I don't not think late. it's not. It's Is 8 it 14. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> well, Yanni oh McGillicuddy God. over here, I didn't know what we oh, were doing. Oh, I know. What? He's, you know, I know. Bullshit. You think I'm not around a yawner? In- he does this. He goes like this. My husband tries not to yawn and then he goes through his nose. Pull, and he oh. goes through his nose and starts literally his eyeballs of water. Like he goes, <sighs> Come on, Trey, man. We're married. We know all the signals. 